I do through the process of drawing a lotus and a bud. We're going to start with the original photo composition and transform it into a more dynamic drawing. I'll explain the steps I took including image search, sketching, layering, color use, and blending techniques. Thanks for joining me and let's get started. To begin this drawing, I needed a reference image. Pixabay is an excellent online resource website that provides millions of fantastic images which are free to use and draw inspiration from. I personally love this site and let's explore it together. The landing page of Pixabay changes regularly and currently it reflects the beautiful colors of fall season. For this particular drawing, I decided to search for a water lotus in the search section of Pixabay. As you can see, there are numerous stunning images to choose from. While I prefer taking my own reference photos for gallery exhibitions, I often use Pixabay for tutorials or when I need images of unusual subjects that I cannot photograph myself. As I scroll through the first page of Lotus Images, I'm looking for a composition that includes a flower and a bud in one image. I came across this image which is exactly what I was looking for. To download it, I simply click on the download button and choose the highest resolution. The image then downloads to my iPad. Signing up for Pixabay is free and all it requires is an email address. Once I have the water lotus image, I begin by creating an initial composition that suits my needs. Typically, I would sketch out the composition on paper, but for this demonstration, I'm using Photoshop. I'm including the flower, the bud, and some greenery from the original image. By cutting out the flower and rearranging the elements, I create a more dynamic composition that adheres to principles and elements of art. In this case, balance plays a significant role with the dominant flower slightly to the left balanced by the right-leaning bud. The bud stands out with its vibrant colors and intricate details, while the slight lean adds a touch of movement. Lastly, the three wisps of green foliage draws the eye from the main flower to the bud. To streamline the color selection process, I like to use a program called Procreate. While I skipped a step when doing my own artwork, it's essential to showcase options available to beginners struggling with color choices. When I import the image into Procreate and generate a color palette, this is what it looks like. I can now use this color palette to select the colors from my drawing. Procreate is a versatile drawing program that I often use for sketching and layout purposes on my tablet. Keep it in mind that there are numerous programs and apps available to assist with color selection. Procreate is just one of the many options out there. For this drawing, I'm using Stonehenge white paper, a fantastic 100% cotton archival paper. It has a great tooth and works wonderfully with colored pencils. My color pencils of choice are Luminance from Caran d'Ache and Polychromos from Faber-Castell. These pencils are highly regarded by professional artists worldwide and are known for their exceptional quality. To speed up the drawing section of the video, I'll be using time lapse. I'll provide a walkthrough of my process and share all the elements that came up during the creation of this drawing. For a complete list of the pencils used and a layout of the new composition, I encourage you to sign up to my newsletter on my website. The information can be found in the description section below. In the November newsletter, I'll include a list of all the pencils used as well as a preview of a new Christmas bird drawing featuring a cardinal. The next step is to transfer the image onto the paper. I use a technique called sighting method. As I sketch out the basic lines of the bud and flower, I carefully check for line angles and overall layout. I usually start with a rough sketch on a less expensive paper and continuously refine the shape until it is correct. Once I'm satisfied with the initial sketch, I create a clean version and transfer it onto the Stonehenge paper. Now the image is ready for me to start applying color. I always start my drawings by outlining the subject using a mid-tone color from the palette. For the flowers, I'm using a medium pink on the petals and green for the stem and the branches. Once the outlines are done, I use a kneaded eraser to remove all the graphite from the paper. This step is crucial to prevent the graphite from muddying the colored pencil later on. Now, let's focus on the bud. To create depth and dimension in my drawings, I rely heavily on layering. When working with lighter subjects like these flowers, I prefer to begin with the lightest hue available. In this case, I'm using a light yellow as a base layer for the entire bud. Considering the layers of colors, I always make it a point to analyze the overall image and understand the color palette. By comparing it to the reference photo I created, I can better grasp the colors at play. Looking closely at the color palette, I notice a predominant presence of cool colors, especially in the pinks. 
These cool tones mix well with the greens, resulting in a harmonious blend. The greens themselves exhibit both cool and warm hues. Color temperature plays a vital role in creating a unified image. Sticking to a consistent color temperature allows us to achieve harmonious colors, an essential principle of art that brings artwork together. In this case, the pinks and greens flow seamlessly into the purples of the shadows, creating a pleasing visual harmony. However, it's crucial to strike a balance when working with cool or warm color palettes. An image composed solely of cool colors could give off an overall cool vibe. To counter this, I introduce elements of opposite color temperatures throughout the drawing. Layering on some browns and warm greens helps to warm up the otherwise cool purples and pinks providing a much needed breathing space for the eye. When I draw, I often amplify the colors from the original reference photo. I'm not overly concerned about perfectly matching the original colors. What matters to me is whether this direction resonates with me as an artist. I often work with high key tones, which feature light and saturated colors. This style is consistent across my body of work and has become somewhat of an artistic signature. It's important for you as an artist or beginning artist to think about the style that you're interested in. Maybe you're interested in high key tone colors or low key tone colors. It's all up to you to figure that out for your style as an artist. To achieve this high key tone effect, I rely heavily on layering very vibrant, very saturated colors. The layering technique allows me to create texture, visual interests, and mixtures of colors. Sometimes I even apply up to 20 layers of colors to achieve the desire effect or color texture. In this particular case, I'm focusing on adding shadows and darker areas to the bud to create depth and dimension. It's important to ensure that my layers are not too heavy, even at this stage, so that I can add more color later. I really need that purple to enhance visual interest. When working with greens and pinks, it's best to use purples as shadow colors. Purple sits close to green and complements the overall image of pinks and greens. To finish off the bud, I go over it with a blending pencil and some OMS Mineral Spirits. This technique helps push the color into the paper fibers and blends all the colors together seamlessly. Moving on to the main flower, I start by lightly adding a layer of cool pink to most of the petals. Unlike the bud, the flower contains more yellows and greens. I begin by gently applying the colors, barely pressing hard on the paper. Once I've achieved a good overall look for the flower, I start adding darker purples and pinks to slowly build up the shape and form of the flower. Drawing the flower and the bud took me approximately four hours from start to finish. Working with colored pencils requires patience. Take your time, build up the layer slowly, and you'll achieve great results. When layering, it's important to work with a light touch. Applying less pressure when adding color is key to success. I describe the pressure I use on a scale from 1 to 4, with 1 being lighter than usual writing pressure, 2 being my normal writing pressure, 3 being slightly heavier, and 4 being the heaviest pressure. I'm working between different types of pinks right now and a little bit of purple. They range anywhere from a slightly warm pink to a little bit of a cooler pink. I keep layering all of these pinks on top of each other and darker pinks actually will help to create a little bit more shadows. I'm also using a variety of different types of greens, lighter greens and darker greens. This will also help to create a little bit more dynamic interest and visual language to the image. Texture plays a significant role in any subject. In the case of the lotus flower, it has a lot of lines that form unique textures. These lines represent the ups and downs of the petals and contribute to the overall appearance of a lotus flower. The lines on the petals are known as contour lines. They help the eye follow the shape of the petal while also creating distinct areas of form and dimension. By observing and drawing these contour lines accurately, you can capture the shape of the petals. Contour lines are an essential element of art that helps bring your drawing together. Pay close attention to each petal, referring back to your reference photo to understand the petal shape. Mm -hmm. 
Adding texture to your work is an excellent way to create visual interest. However, it's crucial to find a balance and not overdo it, as it can overpower the image. Sometimes less is more, and a subtle hint of a line is better than too much or too little. To add warmth to the image, you can see that I've added some warm yellows and oranges in the bottom part of the petals. I've also added a little bit of brown and that's mixed in really well with the yellows and the oranges and they've kept it really nice and warm. In this drawing, I used a range of pinks from cool to warmer tones. Blending these colors together provides a resting point for the eye and gives the image a lighter feel. The use of warm colors can convey the effect of sunlight or warm light illuminating the subject. To finish the image, I keep adding more greens and browns and reddish browns, mixing, layering, and blending them all together. To get the dark shadows on the petals on the bottom, I'm mixing layers of dark warm greens with earth toned browns and layering mixes of purple reds over it all to achieve some dark shadows for these areas. To finish it off, I use some OMS to blend, mix my colors with a paintbrush and use a colorless blending pencil to refine the mixing. In conclusion, the work conveys a sense of fun, bright colors, more bright than the original, but I'm good with that. The idea is to have fun with what you're doing and keep building your skills. So thanks for joining me and happy drawing.